I didn't get to finish what I was trying to say before because my phone's feeling the heat uh, once again. It conks itself out when it feels that. But um, yeah, I was trying to say something about um, uh, the, uh, the non-specificity, the kind of the elasticity that is inherent in these miniatures rules. And so a lot of judgments having to be made as gentlemanly calls or um, on-the-spot house rules even just momentary house rulings. Um, I like that spirit um, because it's going to enable me to feel like a sort of more freer and loose style of play. Um, it's obviously not... It needs a lot more gentlemanly aspect and that board, board games are a lot safer than for the other way, the sort of, the, the more rigid um, constriction of hexagons and, um, you know, in facing this side of the hexagon or that side of the hexagon. There's a lot to say to that, but it's, um, this feels like a breath of fresh air to me in comparison. So, um, yes, uh, I, I think I could have left units set up hidden if they had not been spotted. So, for example, these Prussian units could have been left hidden, but I decided to set them up anyway. I've, I've left the Austrians um, unspotted, so it's going to be more surprise for the Prussians. Um, so I've, I've laid them out. Essentially, uh, I took away the 4x4 four four inch square, and the eek units are in column. I hadn't thought about that. So you can see they're advanced in march column all the way up to the, uh, near, nearly to the skirmish line. So I think essentially these might be within uh, charge distance. So it could be merely of um, uh, units in the in march column, potentially. Um, something to think about when playing it again. Uh, so uh, these aren't different, it's just my printer printed out in a different shade because I chose a different shade for one print and the next. Um, these are leaders, that's the major general. I didn't have a figure for him, so this I decided is Zython. Uh, he's got initiative of two, and uh, the major general on the um, uh, Prussian side, where is he? Uh, that I decided is Major General Lacey. He has initiative of one. Um, I didn't stipulate before where they would going to be, but anyway, they are where they are now. Um, yeah, one more thing to note. So that's that's within the four by four, four inch by four inch square. Um, they have to set up in column. Essentially, what we've got here is um, two battalions equals one regiment, so every regiment has a flag, and uh, for the Prussians, two regiments equals a brigade, and there's their general. Um, the, for every 4x4 four four square is just one battery. These are still in the uh, facing backwards because they're, uh, unlim they're limbered. Um, and it's a bit different for the, um, I'll have to show you here, it's a bit different for the, the Austrians because um, uh, how does it go? It's interesting because with figures like this, bases, stands, you can see the difference between formations more. So they get that's um, one brigade, which is again two regiments, but each regiment is bigger. So the regiments are 12 um, bases, and uh, for the Prussians, the regiments are nine bases. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so there's that difference to take into account. Um, now I'm, I'm sort of quickly scurrying along before I won the phone contact and before I have to stop all this and potentially might have to pack it all away again when the rest of the family comes home later. Um, you got there, don't forget, those are the uh, off-board units and uh, these are unrevealed. Um, these ones were revealed because they were spotted by them. So we got, that's a three-figure um, battery. So essentially that means six guns. The, the other batteries are all four guns, I believe. So yes, artillery is at one battery, each four by four unit. So I just placed them in the centre. Otherwise, I think I could have placed them. Yeah, actually, let's do that. Place them a bit more towards the edge so they're, they're closer because it's important for units to be within uh, command control. Um, okay, so I'll stop here for a minute, and uh, maybe um, and I'll start with playing the game with initiative roll. So we finished the starting the battle section. Now we're on to the battle section, and we start with initiative. 
Now, I like how these rules are written because you start out with a general rule and uh, then you get more specifics in the rest of it. So you can quickly skim through, read all the general rules and go, OK, so I've got a rough idea how this game plays. And then I'm going to get to the specifics as I, I need those rules. Yes, yeah, so the initiative here is interesting. Uh, the player who wins an initiative test may act with part of his army or force his opponent to act. So, so you can get, uh, you know, if he's low on units, you can force him to, to, act his, to enact his units. Sorry about all this moving around, it's terrible. Um, I think I'm blathering too much, so I'm just going to have to come back later when I can actually play this and show you what's going on.